Hey, Bastish BF for 64K, and welcome to another episode of Top Tens. Welcome to 64K, hosted by Bastish B. And welcome back. So, on today's episode is my top 10 favorite Sega Saturn racing games. Now, when you think of a Saturn, you don't immediately think of racing games. It's kind of a little bit of a genre that's down there a bit. But there is quite a lot of really good ones, especially exclusive ones, which don't often get mentioned or have never been re-released. So on this list, I've tried to keep it as much exclusives as possible while still keeping to the fact that these are games that I love. So you're not gonna see games like Wipeout or Destruction Derby. Those are essentially PlayStation games and everybody associates them with the PlayStation. And to be perfectly honest, as a massive Saturn fan, we all know that those, those versions are actually better on the PlayStation. So we're just going to forget about those. I've tried to keep as many exclusive as possible. There are a couple of uh, multi-format racing games on here. Obviously, there's no way to avoid that. So if you're new to the Saturn and know nothing about racing games on the system, or just looking for a bunch of cool arcade racing games and simulations, <laughs> then I hope that this little list will help you find some cool games. And so like in all my countdowns, right before the number one reveal, I'll give a short honorable mentions list, so if you don't see your favorite game up until then, they may be in there. And without further ado, let's get on with this countdown. Sega Touring Car Championship was released in 1997 by Sega. It was based on a 1996 Model 2C CRX arcade racer, which is almost like a spiritual successor to Sega Rally. The game is based on the real German Touring Car Championship, which designer Tetsuya Mizuguchi was inspired by, and he himself had previously worked on Sega Rally and would go on to work on Dreamcast games such as Rez and Space Channel 5. The big difference between this racing game and the regular Sega outings is the difference difficulty or realism, which in this game is pretty high. The Saturn version has five tracks available with three arcade ones up front and two unlockable ones. There are four cars to choose from with two of them being exclusive to the Saturn version and are from Sega Rally themselves, which are the Toyota Celica and the Lancia. The racing is extremely fast and frantic with a great draw distance and looks really good overall. The car handling is very floaty and hard to get to grips with using a regular Saturn pad, but playing this with the the 3D pad or a steering wheel is highly recommended as it plays extremely well with either. But I'd go with the 3D pad. If you're stuck with a regular controller then this is going to be a super difficult game to play. The music is a mix of awesome 90s techno and typical Sega 80s city pop Japanese funk which you either love or hate. This game generally gets a bad rap which is a bit of a shame. I agree the controls are an issue but if you have the right controllers and this is a pretty good arcade racer. It was also released on PC about a year later like most of Sega's Saturn offerings and sports a higher resolution and if you're a PC gamer then it's worth checking out if you're into arcade racing games. Overall a really well made and put together game that's worth playing as long as you have the Knights 3D controller available otherwise you're gonna be in for a tough as hell rage inducing racing game. Number nine. One Gun Dead Heat was released in 1996 by Pack and Video in Japan. It's known as Highway 2000 in the West and this review is based on the Japanese version. This is a racing game in similar style to other Japanese Saturn races of the time, like Toge King the Spirits or Drift King 97, where you are racing in real cities and not on tracks and the drifting mechanic is a highlight of the racing style. You have your usual selection of race styles from the fun two player versus battle mode to the usual time trial, but the scenario mode is where the heart the game is. The big difference between this game and most races is the option to pick up a lady to race with you. Each one has a particular standards which they expect you to follow as you race which adds to the pressure and fun as you are not only trying to win but meet their ridiculous particular criteria as well. <laughs> Number 
The women are all portrayed with real FMV sequences and are super cheesy, but fun nonetheless. The game has five tracks and you can choose from three different cars, each having their own speed, acceleration, handling and grip differences. The trick to racing and winning in this game is knowing when to drift and when to just take a corner regularly. It's the difference between shaving seconds off your time, but critical to winning and keeping the lady interested to carry on joining you in further races. The graphics are pretty good without being too spectacular but function well. The cars are all easy to drive and the drift mechanic is fun and very simple to get to grips with. The music is really good funky Japanese pop rock that works extremely well in this game and I just love it. It should be noted though that if you play the English version, Highway 2000, the girls are completely cut out of the game and the music is different as well. So basically all the cool Japanese charm is gone, just a note to keep in mind. Otherwise this is a cool arcade racer that's totally worth checking out. Road Rash was released in 1996 by Electronic Arts and was based on the 3DO version which came out in 1994. Even though it's simply called Road Rash, it's not an update or remake of the original Genesis version but a standalone entry. In the game you take the role of an anonymous bike rider entering the illegal Road Rash competition which is an anything goes, no holds barred race across five American states to see who's number one. There's two different modes, Thrash which is a kind of like an arcade mode where you select any of the five routes and race to the finish but big game mode is the real deal campaign where you bet on races to make money you can either upgrade or buy new bikes and can save your progress as you make your way through all the states if you've never played a rash game before then not only are you riding on real roads which are filled with cars and pedestrians but you have the cops to contend with and other riders who are equipped with all manner of handheld weapons you can play dirty as well by kicking them into traffic or taking their weapons and beating them with it. The graphics are a mixture of 3D backgrounds and digitized characters similar to Road Rash 3's style. The soundtrack is absolutely phenomenal and includes real 90s alt rock bands such as Soundgarden, Monster Magnet, Paul and many more. It's also jammed with FMV for all those intros and endings to races which are totally fun and are just like the little animations you used to get in the original games just played out in FMV this time. The game plays really well and I just love the long winding real feeling of the roads and it makes a nice break from racing on a confined track. Plus the addition of beating your fellow riders up is just the icing on the cake for me. The official Sega Saturn Magazine August 1996 issue said, it's a good game. They gave it an overall 78%, only complaining that they feel the conversion is not as good as it could have been from the 3DO. Honestly, these guys are just being nitpicky as usual. If you like the 3DO version, then you'll love this one. This is just a great time capsule of that 90s vibe and an awesome Saturn racing game as well. F1 Live Information was released in 1995 by Sega. It also goes under the name F1 Challenge in the US and Europe. I've only ever played the Japanese version, which this review is based on. This is a Formula 1 arcade styled racing game, putting you in control of one of the most popular racers of the era such as Michael Schumacher, Damon Hill, John Alesi and a whole bunch of others as you race to be number one. If you've ever played one of those excellent but insanely difficult F1 simulators that Codemaster puts out every few years and wished it was just a little bit more arcade friendly then F1 Live is your game. Realism is thrown right out the window in typical Sega style in place of fun and accessibility making it a racing game anyone can play and have a ball with. Even my four year old daughter can play it even though she turned F1 into a demolition derby. Bye, to you. Oh, you've turned F1 into stock car racing. <laughs> what are you like a suicide at? What are you doing? <laughs> You got a few different modes including Grand Prix which is like a campaign, although there are only three real tracks which are Monte Carlo, Hockenheim and Suzuka. Original mode includes three extra tracks by Sega which are honestly even more fun to race than the real ones. And then there's the good old time attack to improve your records on whichever track you want to practice. In Grand Prix mode you'll get to mod out your F1 to whatever specs you want like selecting different tires or changing the wing angles etc etc. And also in this mode you get the live style commentary on the race which makes it feel like you're watching a TV broadcast which is pretty cool. The graphics are really good with long draw distance and a solid frame rate that never seems to dip. 
good F1 engine sounds and voiceovers and it plays really well with a regular controller, with the first person view working perfectly. The official Sega Saturn Magazine January 1996 issue gave it an overall 80%, saying, a pretty fine racer that should appeal to most, what with genuine racing stars and easy going control method. Overall it's just a fun solid racing game that's very easy to pick up and play for quick bursts of arcade racing action. Manx TT Superbike was released in 1997 by Sega, based on their 1995 arcade original. The game is based on the Isle of Man TT motorcycle race that is considered one of the most dangerous races in the world. The TT stands for Tourist Trophy. Yeah, Manx TT Superbike! The Saturn version has two main modes, Arcade, which is a replica of the Arcade, and Saturn mode, where you can play all the tracks like a campaign, and also get to choose a bike, which all have different stats. There are two courses to choose from, one being the real TT Isle of Man course, and the other Laxey Coast, which is a made up track, although it's still taking place on the Isle. The game plays a bit like Sega Touring Car, and the fact that it's hard to get to grips with initially, but unlike that game, it's totally playable on a regular Saturn controller. You'll just need to practice a bit. But having said that, again, the analog 3D pad works best for this one. The game is an excellent conversion of the arcade with fast smooth action and really fun challenging courses. Although there's only two, they are hard to master, so it really doesn't feel like less of a game. The graphics are very good with a nice sense of speed in first and third person. And I really love the music as always with Sega games, it's just an awesome funky rock mix. It plays really well too and once you learn not to oversteer and be very light on the controls, the game becomes an absolute brilliant racer. I originally had this on a demo disc in the 90s and was never able to master the controls, but I'm glad I revisited this game for this list because I was finally able to click with it now and had an absolute blast playing it. This game also got a PC release in 1997, which again sports a higher resolution amongst other minor upgrades. The official Sega Saturn magazine scored it an overall 91% in their April 97 issue, saying, Although last ability could have been improved, Manx TT is a tough, enjoyable experience, which does a great job of bringing the arcade game to the Saturn. And I think that about says it all. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. There are lots of good reasons to go with Sega Saturn instead of Pretendo. We call them games. Sega Saturn has tons of them. Pretendo has just a few. It does beg the question, do you want to play or twiddle your thumbs? Face it, Pretendo, you weren't worth waiting for. Daytona USA Championship Circuit Edition was released in 1996 by Sega. This game is a massive overhaul or extended version of the original Daytona USA which came out in 1995. Unlike the original, this is not based on any arcade version, but improves on all the flaws present in the original conversion. The biggest issue with the original was the draw distance and pop-up which has been addressed, making the racing action way smoother and less jarring to play, although it's not perfect. The frame rate is also consistent and doesn't fluctuate as much like the first one and the graphics have taken a much needed upgrade looking way better and just full of detail and color. You still got all the tracks from the original game plus two new ones which are very cool and fun to drive with the Seaside Street Galaxy being my personal favorite. There's also a whole bunch of new cars to try out as well. All the modes are pretty standard arcade friendly style with versus, time attack and obviously arcade mode with nothing out of the ordinary. This is definitely another racing game that benefits fits from the 3D pad or steering wheel, but it's still perfectly playable with a regular pad. Music is great as usual. Sega just knew how to make those funky tracks that get your feet tapping as you raced, and it's a great soundtrack overall as always. Gameplay wise it does feel quite a bit different than the original, with a lot more sliding mechanics built in, but the first person mode is particularly excellent and is the best way to experience this game. There was also a PC release which besides having a higher resolution also sported an extra track as a bonus. 
Plus. And let's not forget the Sega Netlink version, released to play online, but obviously those functions are defunct now. The official Sega Saturn magazine scored it a massive 90%, saying, a graphically excellent fine plane racing game that's far superior to the average driving game. Overall, an excellent update of a great racer, made better in every single way. The Need for Speed was released in 1996 on the Sega Saturn by Electronic Arts and was based on the 1994 3DO version. This game was the start of a massive racing franchise that is still in production to this day in various forms. The game was a collaboration with the Road and Track magazine as a way to legitimize the realism and get the car physics as accurate as possible. And it definitely works as this is probably the most realistic racing game on this list. The game has six tracks or open roads and are all very diverse which I really like. The long straight highways of the cities, the winding roads of the coast and the massive hills and dips of the Alpine make for some really interesting racing. Like Road Rash, not only do you have to beat your opponents but also be aware of the cops who will hound you and if caught multiple times it's game over. The presentation is top notch all the way using FMV for intros and car descriptions which is awesome and has some pretty good music. One of my favorite modes is the two player split screen and we used to play this a lot in the 90s and it is a really fun two player experience for you and a bunch of friends. This game always reminded me of the original Test Drive or Test Drive 2 with not only the realism of the cars but also the inside dash game point of view which I always really liked even though I usually played the game from the third person view. The graphics are good without being spectacular but the sense of speed is cool especially when you max out the car and are blasting down those straights. The realism of the cars take a bit of getting used to especially if you're an arcade racing fan but stick with it as it gets better with practice. PC also got a special edition of this for DOS which has two extra tracks and is well worth checking out. The official Sega Saturn magazine issue number 9 July 1996 scored it a 75% saying that they enjoyed it but with the impending release of the new Daytona you may want to wait for that instead. In retrospect both games are completely different styles of racing games and I think there's room to own both. Overall an excellent game I spent hours playing and replaying back in the 90s and it's still a great experience even now and is obviously a great throwback to this franchise's roots. Andretti Racing was released in 1996 by Electronic Arts. This game is based on the legendary Indian stock car racers Mario and Michael Andretti who also helped out with the design of certain aspects of the game. Having said that, this game gives you the option of racing either Indy or stock car and both cars handle extremely differently so to me this one always felt like two games in one. There are a whopping 16 tracks to race on with four of them being real courses and another 12 designed by the Andrettis themselves. You got your usual options like single races or career mode with the later being the meat of the game. The presentation of the career mode is excellent with this full EA Sports type TV broadcast with FMV sequences and commentators setting up each race. It really feels like you're taking part in these giant racing spectacles. I also like the Andretti racing history section where you can watch videos of them talking about aspects of racing and their lives. It's very interesting. As far as the racing goes it's quite excellent and although this gives you the impression of being in hardcore simulation the game still feels a bit arcadey but in a good way. Both cars handle really well. I particularly like the IndyCar stuff more. The graphics are pretty solid overall with a fast frame rate and a good sense of speed. The official Sega Saturn magazine March 97 issue gave it 83% overall saying with a wealth of options there's enough to keep you at it for a long time. Like I said earlier despite its simulation type appearance and options this is one of the easiest and enjoyable games to get into on this list which make it highly recommended overall in my book. Number two. Virtual Racing was released in 1995 and was developed by Sega and published by Time Warner. This is a massive update of the original 1992 arcade classic that it basically feels like a new game in the series. Just like the arcade, this is just 100% pure arcadey racing action and if you like your races simple and to the point, then this is it. The game still has the original 3 tracks but adds a massive 7 more for a total of 10 which is crazy. We also have 4 new cars added and they are 
extremely diverse and all play completely differently, from a Porsche 911 to a go-kart and many more. It really makes this game feel open and more fun to play, especially experimenting with all the different cars. You've also got the addition of a Grand Prix career mode, where you get to play through all the cars, and is a great test of your skill with the new vehicles. So even by 1995, these graphics were looking a little bit dated by the newer 3D stuff, but playing this in retrospect is actually aged better than most games of the era. The simplistic neat lines and the basic detail make the game feel less dated than some other classics, and I just personally love the look of it. The music is pretty good, as always with Sega Racers, and the gameplay is excellent with well-designed tracks and a great sense of speed, and each car being its own beast to master. It's just a full package. The official Sega Saturn Magazine January 96 issue scored it a 77% and seemed to completely misunderstand the game, saying, not a very close conversion of an undisputed arcade classic. The question is, who wants this with the awesome Sega Rally ready for release? Like I said before, these guys said some really weird things sometimes. It actually is the arcade plus a heap more, and there's no reason to rate a game less based on the fact that something else is coming out later that may be better. And I digress. So in my humble opinion, the combination of its arcade pedigree, the massive amount of extras and overall fun factor make virtual racing on the Saturn one of its best races. Okay, so let's just stop here for a minute and check out a few honorable mentions. These games just didn't make the top 10, but are still well worth checking out. Okay, so first up is Toge King the Spirits, or High Velocity as it's known in the West. This is a flawed but still pretty cool Japanese drifting game where you race down these mountain roads all the way to the bottom. It's a crazy game, it's got a lot of cool options in it. It's, you know, it has its flaws, so it's not perfect. That's why I just didn't make the list, but I think it's still well worth checking out if you're into the drifting type games. The next one is Formula Kart. This was a European only release, I'm not sure why, but anyway, it's a fun go-kart racer, it has all the tropes of a classic Sega arcade racing game. I could just never master the twitch type controls, I just really suck at it. <laughs> so I could never do a proper review of it, but I think the game is still worth checking out. Next is Sonic R, the most flawed game I'm gonna mention here out of all of these, but damn did I love this game in the 90s, especially playing it versus against a friend. The controls are an absolute mess, the tracks are just confusing as hell, the camera is almost non-existent, but damn is that soundtrack phenomenal. I can't honestly recommend this game but I still wanted to mention it because I still have such a massive nostalgic soft spot for it. And he has three more excellent Japan only releases of classic 80s arcade games. Well one of these was available on a US compilation. Anyway Outrun which is a damn good arcade perfect conversion as well as Power Drift. These were both available on the Sega Ages label Japan only. And then there's also the double dose of the Chase HQ pack which has the original original Chase HQ and the excellent Special Criminal Investigation. Again, these are almost arcade perfect replicas and are well worth seeking out if you're into 80s arcade racing games. And now let's check out that number one game. Sega Rally Championship was released in 1995 by Sega and was based on the 1994 arcade racing game. The game was designed by Tetsuya Mizuguchi who did Sega Touring Car which we looked at earlier. I first ran into this arcade in about late 1995 next to a local cinema we used to frequent every weekend and I would play it every time we went and absolutely loved the look and feel of it and it was also fortunate at the time I discovered the arcade the local magazines were showing previews of the Saturn game. That was almost ready for release. Needless to say, I had snapped it up quickly and had found my Saturn Racing Bliss. On the surface it feels like a small game with it pretty much being a direct conversion of the arcade with the addition of a time attack mode. And that was it, race through three tracks and see if you can get to the end without running out of time. It's the classic Outrun model, and I just love that simplicity. You have two cars to choose from, the Toyota Celica and the Lancia Delta, and both handle quite differently, so find the one that works for you and master it. There's also a secret bonus car to open. The best part about the game is the excellent track design and on-point controls. Every corner in this game is challenging and can be mastered to shave seconds off your time, and is one of the few games on this list that I know every turn off by heart. The car handling and rally drifting mechanic is just perfect and is easy to play but hard to master. 
The graphics are excellent, being extremely close to the arcade in almost every way and are a great showcase for the system. Overall, it's just a brilliant conversion to a home system. Sure, it doesn't add much new features, but the sheer arcade fun of this game can only be compared to my favorite arcade racer on any system, which is Outrun Coast to Coast, and this is right up there with that classic. The official Sega Saturn Magazine issue number 3, January 96, scored at a whopping 97% and said, a rally raging classic Beano of a game. 12 copies. Not only is this a must play Saturn racing game, but I think it's just a must play Saturn game in general that every Sega fan should play. Okay, so what do I think of the Sega Saturn's racing game selection? I think overall it's pretty good. You don't often think of racing games when you think of this system. You usually think of fighting games and uh, those big grand RPGs, although they weren't a massive amount, they were some really excellent ones. So you associate the system more with that and obviously like action, arcade action games. But racing is like right down there. But in fact, it has a really excellent selection of them, uh, especially exclusives. And I know when I say exclusives, a lot of these games a year later after they sat and released were released on PC and there's been one or two of them that have been released sporadically over other systems very like very rarely so a lot of these just still feel exclusive and obviously in my opinion the original Saturn versions just feel and play better than any re-releases. There's also still a bunch of cool ones that aren't mentioned here on the list or in the honorable mentions. A game like Scorcher for example. The game is pretty good, I just simply don't have an original copy of that anymore so I couldn't capture any footage. So therefore it's not on the honorable mentions or on the top 10. So just bear that in mind if you're new to the Saturn, there's still more to look out for, but uh, for me personally, these are just my favorites. And if you enjoyed the Sega Saturn content, I've got two other big videos related to this system in my top 10 list. One about Sega Saturn RPGs and one about fighting games, so please check those out if you haven't already. Then thanks for joining me, Bastish B at 64K. I hope you had a good time. And if you can like and subscribe, that'll be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.